Hello everyone, it's your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir. In this video, I'm going to be talking about yet another protest over Muhammad cartoons. So if you don't already know, a teacher in the UK was suspended for showing a Charlie Abdo cartoon of Muhammad. Now I think he may have innocently done this thinking he could teach a lesson to the kids, but he underestimated just how badly the Muslim community was going to react to this. A teacher who showed pupils an inappropriate cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad sparking protests outside a school has been suspended. The image depicting the founder of Islam was used in a lesson at Batley Grammar School on Monday. Videos posted online show dozens of people standing outside the school on Thursday with some demanding the teacher be sacked. The government said it was never acceptable to intimidate teachers. Head teacher Gary Kibble apologized unequivocally, adding that members of staff had given the most sincere apologies and been suspended pending an investigation. We have immediately withdrawn teaching on this part of the course and we are reviewing how we go forward with the support of all communities represented in our school, he said. It is important for children to learn about faith and beliefs, but this must be done in a sensitive way. This never ends. Some students created a petition to reinstate the teacher in the school. But why did he show the cartoons? In an update to the petition created last week by an individual claiming to be a student at Batley Glamour School, they said the teacher was trying to educate students about racism and blasphemy and that he warned the students before showing the images. The message from Batley Grammar School students said the cartoons had been used during a discussion on what racism can look like. The students said, we do not support Islamophobia in any way. We believe we should educate the future generations against racism, which we will not do again out of respect. We intended to educate how disgusting it can truly be because the world deserves to know the truth. The RS teacher thought exactly the same, that the truth of racism needs to be shown to the world so that we understand and combat it in every aspect of our lives. We have watched our RS teacher defend the integrity of all religions within classes and we do not and will not believe he is racist in any way. So the teacher was teaching the class about blasphemy laws and racism. He stood up against bigotry and this is how the school treats him? Is this an Islamic country? In a country where there is freedom of speech, why is a teacher getting fired for showing a cartoon of a man? The protest was filled with angry mob members who wouldn't let the school guard, I suppose, speak about the decision the school has made. Uh, so the inappropriate and other capacity to cause great offence to members of the school community for which we would like to offer sincere and full apology. As such, we've taken immediate action to investigate the matter further. This has included the removal of the resource from the materials, he is a danger to kids for showing a cartoon of Muhammad? Maybe you are the danger to kids. I don't think these idiots realize that the investigation needs to happen before anyone can get sacked and he's already suspended? We the Muslim community object and condemn the use of all and any religious offensive material in schools as has happened at this Batley Grammar School this week. The use of these materials was done in a deliberate, threatening and provocative manner, leaving the children concerned for their safety and well-being. No, it wasn't. Stop lying. The teacher didn't just show up in class, super glue Muslim students' faces to the slideshow and show these images just for the sake of mocking them. He was teaching a lesson on blasphemy and racism, something we surely need. No, and no, it's nonsense to claim that students' safety was put at risk. The teacher's safety is what's at risk now since he's been put into a protection program for him and his family after receiving a bunch of death threats. We do not accept that the school has taken this issue seriously. 
given that it's taken them four days to merely suspend only one of the teachers involved. The teachers concerned must be independently investigated with senior stakeholders from the Muslim community being involved. The incident from Monday 22nd of March must also be investigated from a criminal perspective. Yes. Criminal perspective? You're living in the UK and there's no blasphemy law here. Given that it was a clear attempt to stir up religious hatred. No, it wasn't. We also use this opportunity to call upon the entire British Muslim community to review the materials being taught in their children's schools, whether they relate to offensive content or inappropriate relationship and sex education. If you have concern for the Iman of your children, this is all we have to say as protesters here today. Inappropriate relationships and sex education? Yeah, in case you guys aren't familiar, a program called the No Outsiders Program was proposed in the UK with the aim of teaching children about different groups of people, thereby making them more tolerant of one another, including the LGBT community. The No Outsiders Program was created in 2014 by Andrew Moffat, the assistant head teacher at Parkville Community School in Birmingham. The program aims to teach children about the characteristics protected by the Equality Act, such as sexual orientation and religion. Books used in the program include stories about a dog that doesn't feel like it fits in, two male penguins that raise a chick together, and a boy who likes to dress up as a mermaid. But some parents at Parkfield Community School in Birmingham say lessons featuring books depicting same-sex relationships are not age appropriate and the lessons have currently been put on hold and boy oh boy it got so much backlash from the muslim community in the uk so many protested with banners saying all children are choice demanding that lgbt lessons be removed from primary school books claiming that schools are indoctrinating children when all they were doing was including new children's stories with gay couples instead of straight that's about it the protest delayed the program to be introduced in all UK schools. And in this video where this man is calling upon Muslim community members to pay attention to inappropriate religions and sex education, he's definitely referring to this program. There was no adult content included in the part of the No Outsiders program, but the Muslim community kept making these claims. I think what the school did was wrong. They gave in to the mobs, and when you do something like that, they don't stop. They know that the protests work and the teacher got suspended, so next time they're going to start protesting against LGBT lessons again, mark my words. This is what happens when you let mob justice decide what you do. The teacher has actually been extremely depressed lately and is worried about the safety of his wife and children. A teacher who showed pupils a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad in a religious studies class is in fear of his life, his father has said. The 29-year-old mother has also gone into hiding amid growing concerns. The wider family may be targeted by extremists and rage that he showed the image to his students at the school. My son keeps breaking down crying and saying that it's all over for him, his father said. He's worried that he and the family are all going to be killed. Mass protests have been held outside the school since it emerged the teacher used the caricature, thought to be an image from French satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo as part of a lesson looking at blasphemy last Monday. He should never teach again, one protester told The Independent on Friday. We'll keep coming here until he's gone. This is really sad. It's sad that something like this even needs to happen. If the same was done towards Jesus or another religious figure, some people might have got upset, but no threats like this would happen. Unlikely. What he, what he did should not have ended in his suspension and the administrators of the school are cowards for giving in to the mob's demands. Now I want to react to a video with this talk show host doing a great job humiliating Muhammad Shafiq. If you don't know what Muhammad Shafiq is, he is the chief executive of the Ramadan Foundation who has made a lot of comments against ex-Muslims and blamed them for promoting violence against Muslims. So before we get started, in the beginning the host interviews a man who is against the protests and criticizes the Muslim community for the way they are behaving. And when Muhammad comes on, he gets extremely angry that the Muslim community has been called out and instead of addressing the actual issue, he keeps insulting that man so the host puts him in his place. I've done a lot of uh, interviews with a lot of different people over the years, including the Henry Jackson Society, and I know what they stand for. Um, he wasn't making those comparisons, but he was making the point, which is a fair point to, for you to answer, that do we want special treatment for Muslims? Do Muslims get a special blasphemy law, as I suggested? Do, do, we, do we expect that Muslim children are uniquely uh, should be separated out from other children in the classroom because they're unable to cope with discussing some of these issues or seeing these images? I would argue that that's actually rather patronising to Muslim children, isn't it?
Well, I think you can just see in the way this interview has been conducted. You uh, allowed uh, Dr. Paul Scott to finish because apparently he's on the right. So you may uh, have the same views as him. As soon as I come on, I get interrupted. Uh, I'll tell you why again. I interrupted you, because you um, came and, and on and you your, started and insulting my previous guest. He did not insult um, and you and, you're and you're he didn't cast voice. aspersions on you. No, I'm, because I'm talking over you because, community. Mohammed, would you like to have a conversation about the subject matter or do you want to just sit here and slag off my previous guest because he doesn't agree with you? Would you like to argue you the mean, actual substantive points or do you want to just you, slag someone else off? Brilliant response by her. You are invited to talk about the matter at hand and if you disagree with the previous guest of the show, you can just criticise this point instead of attacking him personally. Julie, do you want to have a debate without uh, siding with the previous guest? Um, I'm allowed to take... I mean, he, oh, I'm, oh, I'm he, completely on his side. Oh, I completely agree with yeah, him. I'm, I, I don't work I for the BBC, are. We Mohammed. know your politics. I'm we know a, your politics. Yes. So we know your language. We know what, what you do. What do um, yes. But I'm always, well, I speak for freedom always, of speech. Uh, yes, I do. That's what uh, I do. And I speak for freedom of speech, and I've got the right to say that um, his offensive words around Muslims acting as if it's a beheading video. Do you think that's acceptable? No, it's not. The way the protesters have been acting, it does sound like they saw a beheading video or something. Rational people don't act that way or make stupid comments that the teacher is a danger to kids or send him death threats. So let's, if you if you would allow me to talk about the substantive issue which you... I, I was hoping you would, uh, yes. If I, um, well, I'm glad we got there finally, if I may right, say It's so. 9.29, um, so if we don't hurry yeah, up, we're going well, to not be able to talk about it at all. Well, if you give me two seconds to at least get a word in edgeways, then we might Mohammed, get Mohammed, darling, this, um, this the, victim the, thing doesn't the, play very well. Could you answer well, one of the questions? Well. well, at least let me try to answer the oh questions before you interject. And, uh, well, this is the approach that you adopt, and I just think it's not still uh, going. beneficial. You're still going. Um, it's not beneficial. Do you want the, to the answer cartoon. a question, or do you want to just criticise me and the previous do you want guest? To just... Do you, do, you, do you want allow me to at least God. articulate what I want to say? Where's my freedom of speech without you interrupting me? Go on! Where's my freedom of speech? The cartoon itself is offensive to Muslims. And so, yes, it's absolutely proper and right for schools to teach about blasphemy, to teach about individual freedom of speech, and to have a conversation in a respectful and tolerant way. What is not acceptable is to allow characters of the Prophet Muhammad bombing his turban to be shown in a school to Muslim pupils who will then be offended and hurt by that? And I just don't think that's the way forward. And so uh, can I just make one final point mm. before you interrupt me? Uh, I condemn, as I've always done, Julia, on your programme, I've condemned any violence against anybody. And I would, I, you know, I'd go to that school if the COVID regulations would allow me to. And I would urge parents to remain uh, peaceful. And anybody who's involved in threatening this teacher or this school um, I condemn that without any reservation. Is that clear enough for you? That's about 100% clear. And I'm sure everyone would Thank welcome you. that. And I wouldn't have expected anything less from you. Um, you talk Thank about you. how it, we need to be respectful and tolerant, but you say it's offensive to Muslims to see this image. Now, I, I understand uh, that it is uh, offensive for Muslims to see this image. Do you have, though, a right not to be offended if that showing the image is important for children to be able to know what they're discussing and what is or what is not reasonable in a liberal free democracy with freedom of speech, freedom of expression uh, and, and freedom to criticise faith because we don't have a blasphemy law in place anymore, that, that it'd be impossible for kids to have that conversation without actually seeing that image. And that, yes, some may be offended, but they can say, I'm offended, I don't like that image and here's why. And then you have a debate about it, whether or not other people should be allowed to show that image but that doesn't need to lead to teachers being suspended or apologies or and I wouldn't remotely consider you to be responsible for this at all but on the sideline also facing death threats and protests outside the school why 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 would that uniquely lead for, for one religion but not any others lead to that outcome that is a good point I would also add that just because something is offensive doesn't mean it should be illegal. Showing cartoons of Muhammad may be offensive to some Muslims, but that's okay. Muslims are also allowed to offend non-Muslims as well. And in a liberal country where there's freedom of speech, such an act is acceptable. You getting offended does not mean something should be outlawed. Well, uh, there are people in this country on this debate who want Muslims to be silenced. They somehow don't want us to practice our faith. They have an issue with our halal, feet, uh, halal meat. They have an issue with the hijab or burqa people wearing that. They have an issue the way we practice our faith and the way we interact with wider society. And then they tell us that, um, you know, we, we, we don't respect freedom of speech. So, you know, we're going to articulate why we're opposed to the depictions of the Prophet Muhammad. We're going to express our freedom of speech 
and do so in a, in a, in a public way, but in a responsible and respectful way. And I just don't think, Julia, that you can, you can show an image that's offensive in a school or any school to pupils, particularly in this school where I understand there are 75% of the pupils are Muslim. I just don't think, you know... Uh, there are no laws against hijab or halal meat in the UK, Mohammed. Stop lying. I'm not denying that people can make anti-Muslim comments, but as far as the law, you have the right to wear hijab or have halal food in the UK. Then he goes on to say, well, if it's freedom of speech, then we also have the freedom of speech to speak up. This is a typical response people make when they're criticized. No one is saying you don't have the right to protest, but you are saying this should be made illegal. And you have been invited to the show to talk about why you believe that. You saying, oh, it's just offensive, doesn't cut it. In, in but, my, but, but your point is sure. you're saying people are trying to silence uh, Muslims on this. That people people criticizing the wearing of, of you know face veils. Or, you know I don't, I don't like wanting to, want to wear one myself even for the proposed health reasons. So people criticizing that. People criticizing different aspects of you know say animal you know, uh, you know way animals are treated for halal meat. Those are all legitimate criticisms that people can either agree with or disagree with, and they can debate those. It doesn't. I mean, some people may be motivated by anti-Muslim feeling to make those criticisms. Some? Other people's mind not but the point is we have the freedom to have that conversation and and muslims who are offended by the showing of this cartoon whether they're parents or or, or anybody who's just getting involved has the right to say i don't like this i don't agree with this i'm offended by this and we have that discussion but the point is to have that discussion in the way that we had about say life of brian and monty python uh back you know all decades ago without the uh, overriding pervading threat that, that at any point this could turn to violence and people being fearful because of the that is they exercise their freedom of speech, that they will face, as happened to Samuel Paty and happened to the Charlie Hebdo uh, um, uh, magazine writers and cartoonists, they will face death. Now, of course, the vast majority of people in this country of any faith, including Muslims, would never, ever, ever agree with that or support it or do it. Of course not. But, but the fact that there is that threat uniquely from one religion, that actually makes it very difficult to, for people to have a safe debate about this. Do you not agree? No, I don't agree with you. Very well said. Let's see how he responds. No, I don't agree with you. And I think that the character of Muslims that you've just set out is what happens often. Um, you know, as I said, I caricatured every aspect Muslims. of... Uh, 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 when did you I know, caricature well, Muslims? Doing. The single religion you talked about, uh, you know... Wait, uh, the which, only other, religion that which other religion, which other religious can, group can, in this country, about, which other religious no, group in this country, this country would, 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 would react about, in this way? Well, I, I can certainly say to you, if you're talking about the oppression that is directed towards uh, Muslims that we see, and violence is used, rape is used, you've got the Chinese, you've got the Indians, uh, and the far-right Hindu mobs that uh, lynch people in the streets. So, you know, living uh, under, uh, under these circumstances is unacceptable. I, look, I want to concentrate on the fact that uh, there are people who use this cartoon to caricature Muslims. The, the, uh, the Charlie Hebdo... Um, um, uh, uh, depiction of the prophet is it's so deeply offensive they mocked and everybody look, I, they, I, they they did 19 um, no no one percent of their well, cartoons were of muhammad most of them were actually of the pope yeah and 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 we saw what they did when a character her majesty the queen only a few weeks ago um in an offensive way and there was some on the right who were criticizing the magazine for that so you know, uh, but, but criticizing no but criticizing is fine criticizing well, is freedom of, of speech is, it just shows you the content of this interview, Julia. You're probably interrupting me a million times. And Paul Scott didn't get interrupted a single time. And it just shows you how polarised our debate and politics is and our national life is, that we can't have a dialogue um, in this We are this having way a dialogue. Because well, you're constantly interrupting me, as you've done throughout this interview. You, you, you didn't well, do you've actually had uh, almost three times as long to talk as well, I hate to tell you. Well, that's timing. Big, well I, actually, I think you've had more time to talk it's than I It's my show. It's always... Great response by her, and yes, she's right. In the UK, it's just Muslims, one religious group, that gets so angry and demands laws to be changed for them as if they are offended. There were barely any non-Muslim groups demanding Charlie Abdo cartoons be banned. There were barely any non-Muslim groups were demanding firing the teacher and making it illegal to show Muhammad cartoons or any other cartoons. And the same with the No Outsiders program for LGBT rights. Of course, there were some non-Muslims who were against the No Outsiders program, but most of them were Muslims. And again, this this is a conversation on the UK matters. I don't know why Muhammad is referring to hijab and halal meat ban, which is in France. In conclusion, 
A teacher in the UK has been suspended and is fearful of losing his life and his family's lives just because he showed a cartoon of Muhammad in a class on the topic of racism and blasphemy. Protests have happened, demanding he be removed, following a couple of other demands like removing the No Outsiders program in primary schools in the UK. When Muhammad Shafiq was invited to speak, he just went on talking about how offensive this cartoon is to Muslims and how Islamophobic everyone is instead of making good arguments against the cartoon. Showing the cartoon cannot be illegal because of freedom of speech. And if you live in a country that has freedom of speech, you need to learn to deal with it. It's sad that the school has suspended the teacher and I hope him and his family remain safe. Thanks for watching. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out. Thank you to everyone on Patreon and all of the YouTube members who are supporting me to continue running the channel. If you'd like to join, please click join now below or click on the Patreon link. Thanks for watching. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.